early days of our country, we were dependent upon artists and portraits to depict the images of the presidents and the first ladies. And so these were drawn or painted and shared and known. And that's the one image or the few images that the country had of their president and first lady. We've also continued this tradition of a portrait for our president and our first lady that go into the White House collection and that are placed in the beautiful spaces of the state floor or on the ground floor in the case of most of the first ladies. And this is a custom that the White House Historical Association has funded on behalf of the American people. The first that were revealed under our support were the portraits of President and Mrs. Johnson. Then portraits were added over time. And then there came a point for the association that we helped the White House go back and acquire portraits of presidents and first ladies where they had a gap. So their, those portraits would not have been painted for the express purpose of being in the White House, but we have now created a whole collection of these portraits so that it's fully covered. All 45 of these men who've been president of the United States have their portrait in the White House collection. We all know that the portrait of George Washington by Gilbert Stewart, which hangs today in the East Room, is the only item in the White House today that was in the White House in November of 1800 when John and Abigail Adams moved in to be the first president and first lady to live in the White House. There's nothing else in the White House presently that was there on day one except for that portrait. There's been occasions where the portrait has been completed and then they thought, mm, I don't know, maybe I want to change this. And so it went back to the artist. And so it takes a little while for this cake to bake, if you will. Famously, Barbara Bush did not like her portrait. So that had to be redone. Ronald Reagan uh, was not fond of his, and so his had to be uh, redone. And I think another interesting point about these portraits is when they select an artist, they being the outgoing president and first lady, and they work with them to select the background, the type of feel that the portrait will have. It really involves how that president and first lady see themselves. For example, in the case of President Johnson, very visibly in his portrait is the Capitol Dome. Well, that doesn't have anything to him do with him being president of the United States, but his formative years in Washington were spent largely on Capitol Hill. My favorites are, I like interesting things about them, like Aaron Schickler painted Mrs. Reagan's portrait and Mrs. Kennedy's portrait. And if you look at them, and they're both in these very slim uh, gowns, very ethereal looking portraits, there's a similarity to them. So I, I like looking at things like that versus saying, I like this one better than I like that one. Well, the White House is a museum and it represents the very best of America and American artists and American artisans. So continuing the portrait tradition continues to highlight the work of American artists that are living and are meaningful in some way or another to that president or first lady. And I think of all the art that is in the White House collection, hundreds and hundreds of, of elements, certainly not all of them are on display at the White House at any one time, these portraits are significant and highly visible. When you walk through the ground floor or you walk through the state floor of the White House, it's these presidents and first ladies that you see and that they are looking back at you. And it really is, I think, a reminder to us as Americans and to that house that it's not about the man and the woman that's living there right now. It's about the men and the women who have gone before and the men and the women who will come after.